Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Maximus Black here with Lag TV, and I'm bringing you a, I do believe, gold versus silver um, low-level commentary match. And uh, before I get into this, um, I'd like to give reminders and shout-outs and stuff before at the beginning of our video. So um, I want to thank everybody for checking out d2dgamer.com. If you haven't already, it is our forum slash website. Um, we have partnered up with uh, some wonderful guys from Exodus. And, uh, yeah, I'll let you guys go and explore that yourselves. But www.d2dgamer.com. Go check that out. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> it's pretty friggin' awesome. And, uh, yeah, so um, I want to give a big shout-out to... Um, uh, I totally forget what I was about to say, but I know I was supposed to give a shout-out to someone or something. Um, but, oh, uh, big shout-out to Sin, yet again, for our... Um, timer blocker that we have over here it is wicked so big shout outs to him and uh, starting in the uh, 2 o'clock position we've got Zwarg and uh, it's a Zerg Red Zerg and uh, down in the 6 o'clock position we have Kill Switch so it is a Zerg versus Protoss match um, like I said it is a Silver versus Gold and um, looks like we get some typical build here um, Gateway Pylon and uh, it looks like uh, he went for a 10 pool, which is a fairly aggressive play. When you're doing a 10 pool, it, it usually means that you're going to be getting units fairly quickly. Um, I personally like to go with a 14 pool, get my, uh, my drone count up, and then get into making units. But, uh, you know, sometimes lower level players uh, like to get some reassurance before the game really gets underway. Um, yeah, so, oh, and me and Adam, I know everybody wants to see some 2v2s, so me and Adam, the next time we get together, which will be this week, um, because the tournament is happening the 11th and 12th, um, and I'll talk about that at the end of this video for a quick minute, but, uh, yeah, the next time we get together, we're actually going to be doing some 2v2s, so they are coming, um, I just personally don't really want to cast 2v2s by myself right now, it's because there's a lot going on. And I think the help with uh, a dual commentary caster um, will be more effective in the 2v2s. So I think the first 2v2 we're going to do is actually me and Adam uh, showing you guys how to do um, effective teamwork. Because when you're playing 2v2s, you don't really want to have one partner that's going to do everything. And then the other partner just kind of sit back. You want to work together as a team. But I won't get into that right now. We will uh, be casting that game. One thing I will point out about this game is Kill Switch still does not have an assimilator, still does not have gas going, and only has uh, 12 uh, probes, although he just chronoed up two more. Um, it looks like he's going to go uh, heavy on the Zealots here at the beginning, which we may see a fast, um, a fast attack, probably with about six to eight Zealots. And... Um, Looks like uh, the Zerg is actually just getting his extractor now. He is getting a Roach Warren, so I'm sure we will see some Roach. And using a couple of Queens, getting his Queen. Oh, it looks like he's getting three Queens. So we actually may see that um, that new build that a lot of players are using with uh, Queens and Roaches and just kind of doing infinite heals with your Queen and keeping them in the back and doing some damage. But uh, we'll see if that happens. Still getting no gas. Wants to get that gas up if you want to uh, build Roach. And uh, also, it looks like uh, the Assimilator is just going down now. And getting uh, a Forge, which is kind of weird. Um, maybe getting some uh, defense. Uh, probably should have went and built the Cybernetic Core first. Well, there's your Cybernetic Core. And it looks like we're actually going to meet each other up dead on here. And these Zealots are going to take out these Ling with ease. And I assume that Red is probably going to be uh, getting some units right now. Because he sees that a bunch of Zealots are coming up to the base. These Zealots will do some damage against these Queens. In fact, most likely they will kill the Queens. Um... Yeah, so let's uh, let's go check out the APM here. It looks like Red's APM just skyrocketed up to about 108, and um, on average, uh, Red is 46. And you're going to see a, a, a fairly bigger uh, APM for a Zerg player. Not always. I mean, there are some Terran and Protoss players that have uh, very high, um, you know, actions per minute. But for the most part, Zerg is very intense. It re does require a lot of clicking. 
especially now that we don't see that uh, this sort of player used any hotkeys at all, like um, hotkeying his units or anything like that. So it's a lot of manually clicking. Um, and it looks like these zealots are going to uh, take down. Mm, it's going to be close, and they focus fire, and uh, he probably should back this roach up. Another thing that uh, a lot of lower level players do that I'll just quickly speak on um, when you are having those battles like we just uh, like we just saw, um, you're gonna want to keep as many units alive as possible. When you're going in and attacking and there's some zealots attacking you up front, you're gonna want to take your hurt roach, back them up, and let the fully charged roach, the full health roach, get in there and finish the zealots. You know, doing this on a regular basis will make it so that your army is larger. At this point, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, sorry, Zorg, Zorg, Zorg has um, six roach. If now, if he would have, you know, played that uh, that attack a little bit more um, micromanaged, uh, he would probably have an extra three or four roach. Probably could have kept three or four four roach alive. But this is lower level play, and we don't really expect to see that. But that's what we're here for, um, guys. If you're if you're in that kind of a situation, you're gonna want to keep them alive, keeping them, you know, even if you, even if they only have six health, at least they're alive, and you can keep those in the back of your army when you are attacking. So it looks like um, finally get some warp gate down here for a kill switch. Gas is going now, and um, let me check out the resources here. So it looks like uh, the Zerg player is ahead in resources, both mineral and uh, gas. Um, if I was the Zerg right now, I would keep going with the Roach, which is, I see that's what they're doing. One thing that I do not agree with on the play of Kill Switch is when he did that first initial attack and he had seen that um, the Zerg player is going Roach, he should have not built Stalker. I mean, sure, if you're going to go Stalker against Roach, make sure you have Blink. And make sure that they're upgraded because Roach, when they focus fire on these stalkers, they will fall very quickly. What you, what he should have done is kept building those zealots, get the zealot charge, and or got some void ray. Tech right up to air, got a couple of void ray, and you would have done some damage. You see, the zealot, the zealot with no charge is going to do nothing. But if you would have had charge and, and tech right up, so it looks like these roach are actually going to destroy all these stalker with uh, with ease. Let's go down here and check out and see what uh, see what's going on. Just getting the twilight council now. I think he may be realizing that he is going to need zealot charge or at least blink stalker to uh, to survive this. I'd like to see some centuries. Um, you know, having good unit composition is everything. Right now, kill switch is in a world of trouble. Zerg now has should have map control. He should be expanding. Um, Continuously pouring out creep here, using these creep tumors to keep getting creep out here, which I see what he's doing, which is going to initially speed up your roach. Um, also wants to get a layer so he can get his roach speed up. So it looks like this is going to be a, a fairly big attack, and we have uh, 20 roach against uh, one century, eight stalker, and one zealot, and a couple photon cannons. So. Let's see what happens. He's going to want to use a force field right here to block off the front so these uh, roach do not get inside. Um, or at least use a guardian shield. And it looks like the roach are coming right up here. Neat. Going to want to uh, start focus firing, getting rid of these cannon, and then focus firing on individual stalker. The, that will destroy the stalker pretty much in one go. Boom. There goes one. Now uh, just pretty much attacking everywhere. The stalker, it looks like the stalker are going to survive this uh, This. Attack here was a close one. Uh, luckily, he warped out probably about five or six more stalker in the meantime and survived. So that was a really good attack. Um, but I don't know if uh, if Kill Switch is going to win this game without getting Zealot Charge or Blink. Um, you know, because Roach are powerful, and uh, when you know when your queen is nonstop getting larva for you, and you are pumping out roach after roach after roach after roach. Um, oh, and it looks like he did get his expansion while he attacked, so that was a very good play. But it looks like uh, Kill Switch just did uh, a really good good counter. I wouldn't really have went up to the base to counter, but I definitely would have went over here to make sure that there was an expansion going up. And this is what I mean about keeping your units alive. You want to back out those stalker, keeping them alive. See, now, you know, he just lost about six units for what? 
you know, he did do a good job at, at uh, killing that expansion and stopping that expansion, but as soon as that expansion went down and uh, Kill Switch saw that, you know, holy crap, look at all these Roach, he should have backed them off, ran back to the base, and uh, regrouped with these units. So it looks like we are going to see a counterattack, and this is quite a bit of Roach here, and bringing down uh, more Roach, and uh, this is not looking good here for Blue. This could be it, unless he can uh, somehow pump out units, but his gas is really low. Not enough to make any more uh, Stalker, has enough to make one more Stalker now, but after that, gas is going to be all sucked up. And uh, it looks like this could be it. The Roach, focus firing on those Stalker. Roach are very, very powerful. Um, very good units now, especially after the update. And a lot of Zerg players are favoring them, and uh, they are working. And, but one thing that I will say about a lot of Zerg players when they do go Roach, I find that they sometimes make that commitment too much with Roach, and a good player will transition correctly um, when they figure out that, okay, um, you know, Zerg is doing this, you know, Roach that everybody does, Roach and Queen, and a lot of the time is a good player will um, build to, um, to counter that. And what I find is a lot of times is their player will just stick to Roach and next thing you know it they have air at their base and there is nothing they can do about it but it was very well played um, and uh, it looks like a Zor Zorg I hope I'm pronouncing that right took the game down and kill switch GG's out so you know that was a, a fairly good game um, not a whole lot I can um, I can really say about uh, play um, I will say that both of their drone counts were a little low we are uh, 15, almost 16 minutes into the game when it ended, and uh, Red only has 21 drones, and uh, Kill Switch only has 22 probes. And you got to take into consideration that six of those are actually mining gas. So uh, you know that's not a whole lot of, uh, definitely not fully saturated. Could uh, step it up in that department. Um, if you are a Protoss player and this happens to you. Um, you know, transitioning into Stalker are okay. I'm not saying that they're not okay, but you're going to want to have a good unit composition when you do so. You're going to want to use sentries. You're going to want to have some zealots up in the front taking the heat while the Stalkers are, um, are shooting in the back. Um, just going Stalker against Roach will fail um, nine times out of ten, especially if you're not micro them correctly with Blink and whatnot. But it was a good game. Um, I want to thank, uh, I don't know if it was Zorg that sent me in this replay or it was Kill Switch. Um, I want to go ahead and say it was Zorg. Um, thanks for sending your replay. Guys, keep sending in your replays. Um, we do have a lot, but we are going to have some more free time coming up. So we'll be able to pump out a lot of commentary more uh, a lot quicker than what we're we're doing now um, just with the website and everything else has been slowing us down a little bit but we're still bringing out the content um, if you like this video rate comment subscribe um, guys please send in replays that are interesting uh, something that's gonna hold the audience's attention um, and or something that you want pointers on something that we can talk about um, I don't want to cast a game that is 30 minutes long in the first 20 minutes are, are uh, people just kind of choking up and turtling and waiting and then one massive attack and game is over. I want something that's constructive and uh, something that's fun. Now about the tournament, uh, the tournament will start at 1 p.m. Atlantic time. Me and Adam live in Halifax, Nova Scotia in Canada. So uh, the tournament will start at 1 o'clock our time. So we did this because for people that are a couple hours beforehand, it won't be too early, and people that are a couple hours ahead won't be too late. So yes, comment, rate, subscribe, do black backflips. Um, we love you, and we love hearing from you guys. Don't forget to check out the website. This is Maximus Black with Light TV, and I'm signing out. Peace.